Hi everybody, I'm Susan Mulvihill. Welcome back to our vegetable garden. So check this out. It is very bright and sunny. It is 82 degrees, believe it or not. And I'm in a t-shirt for a change. So I'm gonna be smart and put on my hat because I'm taking you on the first vegetable garden tour of the season. The first thing I wanted to show you is the onion bed that I was planting in a video two weeks ago. If you look at the far row on your left, those are the Walla Walla Sweet Onion plant starts that I had bought at a garden center. These next three rows are the onion sets or small bulbs that I planted and they are doing awesome. And then it's very hard for you to see these. I'll zoom in on them for you in just a moment. These are the onions that I started from seed using the winter sowing method. And I know a couple of folks commented on my other video saying, boy, those sure are small. Well, we had a really, really cold, tough winter. And so they did not get off to their usual exuberant start, but they are growing very nicely. So let me show you those. Now you can see them a little bit better here. So they are coming along just fine, and I fully anticipate they'll grow into nice full-size onions. Now, if you're wondering why there are hoops over the bed, this is just temporary. We're trying to keep the quail from pecking at the tiny little seedlings. I'm not sure if they would have, but I thought, you know, better safe than sorry. And so on the left of the bed, you can see a sheet of floating row cover. And so I'm just draping that over the hoops. And with a little luck, we can take it off in a couple of weeks because the onion plants will be at a size where they can fend for themselves. Now, right next to the onion bed I just showed you, we have another onion bed. <laughs> have I mentioned that we really enjoy onions? So what's planted in here is little plant starts of a variety called Patterson. It is an excellent keeper. I think 10 to 12 months is the average time that they'll keep in storage, which is fabulous. Next to it is a bunch of shallots that Bill planted. There's also a few more onion sets planted. And then on the left, you can see some small green plants. Those are also onions that we started from seed using the winter sowing method. We have a whole lot of plants in the greenhouse right now. I've got a lot of the annual flowers that I started from seed. So zinnias, cosmos, verbena bonariensis, salpiglossus, asters. Here are some of the coleus plants that I started in one of my seed starting videos. Here are eggplants that I started from seed in my seed starting video. Bill's got a bunch of his pepper plants that he started. They are looking fabulous. And he has some of his tomato seedlings out here. I'm hoping to move mine out in the next couple of days. Now you'll notice there's a bunch of cloth grow bags in front of that row and this row of raised beds. This is where we're growing our potato crop. And using grow bags is a great way to expand the footprint of your garden because you don't need to make another bed you just use the bags. We've done this before. These are roughly 15 to 16 gallon size grow bags and it works great. So the two varieties that we're growing are Elba and Yukon Gem. We got them from a garden center and we filled up each bag with about six inches of potting mix, planted each seed potato. There are three in each bag and then we put a few inches of potting mix on the top. Every time the foliage comes up a few inches, we'll fill in the bag more. We'll add in some compost. And eventually, these bags will be completely full with potting soil and hopefully lots of potatoes. So I'll keep you posted on that. This is the bed where Bill is growing garlic and shallots. So from here to here are the garlic plants and here are the shallots. Now he planted the garlic cloves in the fall. That is the traditional time to plant garlic. And then they emerged in the spring and boy, are they putting on the growth. So we're very excited about that. We will not harvest them until 
the lowest four to five leaves on each plant have turned brown and died. And then we'll dig up each of the garlic bulbs, completely dry everything out, and then move them into storage so we can enjoy them over the next several months. In this bed, I'm growing three different crops that need some insect protection. And that's why there's hoops and floating row cover going over the bed. I've got turnips, arugula, and spinach seedlings. And they're all very newly planted, so that's why they're so little at this point. Again, we had a really cold winter and then super cold spring. So I'm a little bit behind on planting some things because I felt it was too cold. Now the spinach is susceptible to leaf miners. The adult is a fly. The fly lays eggs on the leaves. The maggots then hatch, tunnel through the leaves and make a mess of them to where you would not want to eat them. So that's one reason for the floating row cover. The turnips and the arugula are both members of the cabbage family or brassicas and they are very susceptible to aphids and cabbage worms. So by keeping this bed covered 24 seven, I'm creating a physical barrier that prevents those types of insects from getting to the plants. Now there's a lot going on in this row of raised beds. So let's go through the beds one by one. Now you'll recall that this bed here has the lettuce in it. And this is a hinged raised bed cover. In this instance, I'm keeping birds away from the lettuce because boy, do they love to peck those leaves. Most of these are butter crunch lettuce and I should be able to start harvesting some of the leaves very soon. The frustrating thing is again, we had such a cold winter. My experiment to have lettuce earlier than ever did not quite go according to plan. I had transplanted 24 lettuce seedlings that I started indoors into this bed and 12 of them did not make it. So I've got 12 plants here and I have planted some new lettuce seeds to fill out this bed. In bed number two, that's where I've got the broccoli seedlings growing. I started those plants indoors from seed and transplanted them outdoors about a week and a half ago. The plants are doing great. And before I show them to you, I wanted to mention the covering that's over the bed. This is agricultural insect netting, also known as garden insect netting or agricultural mesh. It's like a very fine window screen that keeps different types of insects out. I used this for the first time last year and I love it, especially since I can see the plants right through the mesh to see how they're doing. I bought this from gardenport.com and so far after one year of use, I very highly recommend it. This is keeping aphids away, which are so tiny, so that's impressive. And it's also keeping cabbage worms away or specifically cabbage butterflies that lay eggs that turn into the cabbage worms. I've pulled away some of the netting so you can see how the plants are doing underneath. I think the broccoli plants look awesome. They're doing great. And if you missed my recent video about planting broccoli, you missed that. I use these little copper rings to keep slugs away from the plants. It works great. So you definitely want to catch that video on my YouTube channel. Now, you might notice these little plants in here, and those are bok choy. What we're doing this year is we're trying to really use the succession planting technique to get the most out of our garden. And there are different ways to do that. So broccoli plants are going to take a while. Bok choy grows very quickly. You can harvest it quite young. And so we can grow them in amongst the broccoli plants, harvest them before they're going to be in the way of the broccoli plants and get two crops instead of one out of a single bed. So succession planting is something we're really trying to hone our techniques on because I love the idea of getting a larger harvest. Now I'll get this covering back on. 
The most important thing you need to know about using floating row cover or agricultural mesh like this is to always weigh it down around the edges because if it blows off, it will not act as a physical barrier against damaging insects. Here's bed number three, and this is one of Bill's beds. He has cabbage growing in here, and he has also interplanted it with more bok choy. And actually, these ones are a little older. They're getting closer to being harvestable. And he also has some onion starts in here. So he's put a lot of things in one bed, knowing that they will be out of the way when the cabbage plants need more room. Now, this bed is also covered with the agricultural insect netting. It's on shorter hoops because the cabbage plants do not need as much room as the broccoli plants do. So let me give you a quick peek in here. Bill is growing both red and green varieties of cabbage. Here's some of the bok choy along the outsides. And there's also the onions here. Everything is doing really well. Hmm, what's going on in here? Well, if you didn't see my recent video on planting peas and carrots, this is the pea patch. And for now, we have a perimeter of floating row cover around this planting and it isn't to keep any insects away it's actually to keep the quail from nibbling on the leaves we're letting the plants get a little bit larger and then we can take this off because it is kind of ugly the plants are doing really well let's take a look at them so here are the pea plants and while it looks like they could just fly inside they really don't do that. So we don't have to worry about that. It's more that we don't want them to walk up to the edge of the bed and realize they can reach in and pick off the leaves. This bed has nothing going on. It is all prepared. And what I'm going to grow here is a whole bunch of different types of flowers. I have dedicated two and a half beds in the garden just to flowers in addition to interplanting some of the crops with flowers. So I'm hoping this garden is going to be a thing of beauty as the season progresses. This is a temporary cover that I can use for covering a certain crop to protect it from different types of animals, hoping I won't need it. And this came from Gardener's Supply. Here's another raised bed with a hinged cover. And inside I'm growing Swiss chard and beets. I just planted the seeds a few days ago and they're all coming up. Come on. This is my little friend, Nancy. She is a mountain chickadee and she has befriended Bill and me in the garden. How cool is that? So here are some seedlings, Swiss chard, beets, and spinach are all members of the beet family. They are all very susceptible to leaf miners, like I mentioned earlier with the spinach bed. And so that's why I'm using this cover over the bed. Here's another bed that is covered with floating row cover. I wonder what's inside here. Running down the middle of this bed are a bunch of red Russian kale seedlings that I started using the winter sowing method. So they each are being protected by little copper rings, and that's to keep the slugs away, and of course, to keep cabbage worms and aphids away with the floating row cover. I have not decided what else I'm going to plant in here, but I need to do that pretty soon. And last but not least is my carrot and parsnip bed. Now, if you tuned into my most recent video on growing peas and carrots, I mentioned how I was using a method of Joe Lample's to try to get better and quicker germination of the carrot seeds and the parsnip seeds. Now the parsnip seeds are not up, but the carrots are up, and that is awesome. Parsnips are notoriously slow to germinate, so I'm not concerned about that. But what I did is I removed the burlap after 10 days, and then I covered the bed with bird netting and hoops because I don't want the quail to eat those little seedlings, and they will. So I'm going to have to wait until they're about three inches tall, and then I can remove that covering, and they'll be large enough to fend for themselves. Plus, it will be time for me to thin the seedlings. And Nancy and I would like to thank you for watching today. Happy gardening, everybody.